How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to the Alpha for Grifflands. It went live just today over on the Epic Games Store. The game isn't going to be exclusive over there like permanently or anything. It's just for the sake of this Alpha. You do have to buy the Alpha. It was like $15. But it will eventually be available on Steam and everything like that when the full release comes around. You've probably know Cly Entertainment already from things like Don't Starve, Oxygen Not Included, Mark of the Ninja really really consistent developers really creative like an amazing catalog of games at this point so i've been very excited for this it's like a deck building adventure and then you, you got to make all these different choices and everything uh this is just letting you know it's an alpha so you know things might change and you know you're probably gonna have a little bit of a learning curve and you got to get used to things a little bit i have not played yet uh, I'm hoping that having just played other deck building games will carry me through a little bit. We might have to learn together a little bit. Hunting Kashio, Sal in Murder Bay. A bounty hunter with a chip on her shoulder. I wanted to say clip, like clipping a gun. Chip on her shoulder and a glint in her eye. Sal escapes a life of servitude to claim the ultimate bounty and get her revenge. Right, here's a funny spin on the deck building. You can fight people and you'll use the battle deck, but you can also, like, just get in an argument with them and negotiate with a negotiation deck. Deflect their stupid questions, talk really fast to disorient them, use your instincts, threaten them. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how all that plays out. It's a funny concept. And then this is a little bit more what people are going to be familiar with, something you would see in, like, Slay the Spire. That's just the deck building game I, I, my brain goes to. I know there's dozens at this point that might be a closer comparison. I'm fairly certain you can recruit people along the way to help you. Uh, right now, there are not other starting characters. Oh, the act is still in development. So is it, it might not be just a starting character. You might take on an entirely different story if you were to choose one of these guys. I really wish I could play with the, the hammerhead alien there. Obviously, I have no prestige or no fa fancy outfits or anything right now. Card unlocks. The setup and the crusher, evoke and bloody mess, big draw and the fury. These would be like modifiers, I guess, that I can take with me when I'm, when I'm starting You're a new adventure. Hunter. You escaped a life of indentured labor by hunting criminals and debt dodgers. The work has earned you your freedom, if not any friends. Oh, lonely, lonely now, bounty hunter. you're back home for the first time in ten years. But freedom comes with its own dangers, and making a living in Havaria won't be easy. Here, the gangs are feral, the law enforcement are corrupt, and the people are treated like chattel. Indebted to merciless criminals. I think the word you want is cattle. Criminals like Cassio, the ruthless dead broker who sold you to the Derricks in the first place. But now, Cassio's grip has weakened. And there's a bounty on her head too rich to ignore. You'll die before you go into debt again. And so will she, if you have your say. Your first stop is a dive called the Grogendog. Where an old <laughs> friend will help you get your revenge. It's a solid, solid name for a dive bar, especially like this space sci fi dive bar. At first sniff, the grog and dog smells like stale hops and dried blood. Ooh, so homey, very welcoming feeling. Well, wow, look what the tide dredged up. Oh, wow. Immediately, the animations go beyond just, like, a uh, simple idle animation and everything. So I'm curious to see, like, the little accents and things that characters do as they're, as they're talking. That could add a lot to, like, the negotiation sections. By the holy brine, I'd tear up if I weren't dead inside. Speaking of, that bounty on Cassio. How do we... Forget it. You might have grown up strong, but you ain't that strong. But that's not going to stop you from trying, is it? If you want a chance at surviving this, you better make yourself some friends fast. I can help with that. Knew I could count on you. Oh, that wasn't just me being like, Pshaw, don't even care. That's this character's name. <laughs> it's like fish if you just skipped the eye and just kept... That's terrible. Your name just sounds like a bunch of static. I can take... A coin purse and get 50 shells, triage kit, healing vapors. Oh, cool, you can hover over to see, um, 
more details about what exactly it is. Oh, that's a really clean, nice looking UI. Boombox gives me a Lumen Grenade and a Lumen Grenade. There's no reason for it to not use the times to the way that this did. I am already starting with 50 or 75 shells. I'm not sure if 50 would make a huge difference. I think I'm going to take the healing vapors because probably I'm going to struggle in the first battle and might want to heal up. When you're near the end, you'll be glad you chose that. Ah, well, I'm glad you're already so supportive of my decision. Ask about or get work. I'll ask about first. Ask about Haveria, the place that we are. Help me get my bearings. It's been a long time since I was last here. It's dirty and broken, like always. If debt brokers was bad when you were a kid, it's worse now. Half the population is indentured, and thems that hold contracts sell them to pay off their own. No wonder customs was so uptight on my way back in. Must be a lot of fraud. That ain't the half of it. The Admiralty is pushing for an official annex. This is cool that you can check in on, like, pl plot details and things, because probably this character has heard of the Admiralty before, and so you don't need the exposition of these characters explaining it, especially if you're playing the game repeatedly. So, the Dentrellian Admiralty, the Dentrian Military Force Occupying Murder Bay. Man, that's a, that's a rough name. You're never going to want to set up a, your school. You don't want to have Murder Bay High School or to, like, put a retirement home in there or anything. You're really kind of setting up what that neighborhood is going to look like for a long time. They want to make everyone real Deltrian citizens with papers and everything. In Avaria? You're joking. A largely unsettled continent in the western side of the Hessian Sea. They say it'll stop illegal debt brokering. Now anyone with a hand in labor contracts is real ornery. From the poor to the powerful. Ornery always just makes me think of the water boy. Crocodiles are so ornery because they got all them teeth and no toothbrush. You can imagine the reaction. <laughs> I can. Ask about Psh, What you been up to? Psh, how is that metal eye treating you? Is that new? You like what you've done with it. So, what do I owe for you, you for this? Psh, a cut of my takings? Hesh, no. Hesh of the Dark, the cult's god of the abyss, believed to live deep under the ocean. I left my bounty hunting days behind me. I owed your parents once. I don't like leaving debts unsettled, even to dead folks. They were decent people, Sal Falon. Sal Falon? Watch. Watch you don't end up like them. I don't know if that's like a greeting or a gesture or if that's the name. No, I'm Sal. Right? Ooh. Sold as a child in the vast city derricks out in the open sea, Sal was initially destined for a life of hard labor. But she was small and quick and smart. She made herself useful to powerful criminals until she grew quick and clever enough to collect on bounties instead. So Sal Fallon is, is definitely my character here. You know, even when you pay off the debts, the derrick still owns your name. I'm an ick derrick now, or so they tell me. Derricks, both the offshore lumen platform and the indentured laborers who work there, and Ick Derrick, the surname given to an indentured workers consigned to the cult's offshore lumen derricks. A lot of, a lot of oh, look at that, a lot of world building happening very quickly here. Yeah, that's some messed up bladder rack though. Yeah. Ask about the annex. I'm, I'm getting into this. I want to know more about like this world that I'm in. The annex can't be a popular move. Most come here to get away from the Admiralty. It ain't. Both the Spree and the Cult are in arms about it. The Spree, because they're criminals. The Cult, because they profit off the labor more than anybody. The Spree is a loosely organized collection of bandits, crime rings, and legal debt brokers. And the Cult of Hesh, same, same thing as we saw before. No need to tell me that. The Cult's holding a big shindig in a few days. Their usual wheeling and dealing in the name of the divine. Word is the Admiralty is going to use this to make their proposition mandatory citizenship. It's going to need to be a mighty good pitch to convince the cult, and I wouldn't put it past the spree to set fire to the whole affair if they can. Psh, cast a dour eye over the bar. I mean, she only has the one eye. Does she have one gleeful eye and one dour eye? Which one is more dour? Probably the metal one. Like it's a garden on the near side of winter. 
Suffice to say, kids, I touched my face at the same time as the character. That's because I'm just hot and sweaty. That They're just... I, the weird coincidence. Suffice to say, kid, tensions are real high. You'd be smart to keep your head down instead of looking for trouble. Tell me about Cassio, a powerful crime load lord who earns her fortune in illegal debt brokerage. You lined up work for me real fast. Some kind of mover here? Maybe a shaker? Nah, I just know people and people know me. You don't need to go after Cassio, kid. I have enough work to keep you busy. I spent my childhood in a lumen pipe because of her, and now she's worth more money than either of us can count. It's a biofuel harvested from the ocean floor, monopolized by the cult of Hesh, and harvested by indentured labor. See, now we're already starting to pull together, like, the cult of Hesh, this indentured labor system that they have going on here. Like, why, what they're being put to work doing. This is very efficiently, quickly rattling out and, and establishing so much about this world. I love it. And she's more dangerous than either of us can figure. You go after her and she'll clap back with a knife for each kidney. They still use clap back in this? In the, <laughs> would you clap between each stabbing? Stab, clap, stab, clap. It's a little bit of a fun little dance you do when you do your murder bay murdering. I may have extras to spare, but you only got two. I worked off a lifetime's debt in two years just so I could get back here and settle the score. If you were my friend, you wouldn't be telling me to drop it. Ah, Hesh, that ain't what I meant and you know it ain't. I'll give you a roof, a bed, and at least one good meal a day. You live your life the way you want. It's yours. I'll pay you back. I know. Let's get to work. Alright, I'm all ready then. Load me up. I got people in my pocket who owe me a favor. Ash, Vaporo, and Bina. They're easy people to find. Oh, cool. I get to see, like, uh, directly a picture of them. And they have, like, an allegiance, I think, is maybe what that is directly underneath them there, maybe? Ash is a spree raider. Vaporo is admirality guard. And Bina is a Jake's smuggler. Tell them I sent you. And they can settle their tabs by giving you work. Get that done, and I'll get you a plate of popped ish, -ish -osh new eyes on the house. A domestic giant snail used for food, transport, and entertainment. What? <laughs> that's too wide of a thing. I guess that's like, if we ate horses, then it would, they would provide transport, you could ride them, you could eat them, and then they would like have racetracks or something. So that's probably what's going on here. But like, do you think you would have a little more empathy? You look a little bit like a snail creature. I'm curious to see how similar fish looks to the Osh news. Bless your warty hide. Psh, I'll hold you to, I'll hold you to that. Jockadel the Grog and Dog. Ooh, we got options. Oh, that is gorgeous. There's like these cool geysers that are venting. Uh, different like sci-fi architecture, but there's also like this camp out this way. I'm just kind of trying to take it all in. Uh, like some sort of neat lighthouse going on over here. Some sort of like city center, like obviously an important tower and like some, uh, that might be a cult building. I'm just thinking it looks important and prominent and very glowy. Like a racetrack, maybe that's an Ashnu racetrack or something. These cool waterfalls, God. Usual, usual Cly quality here. So difficulty one, one, and one. Focuses combat, focuses negotiation and negotiation. I kind of, good, I wanted a quick feel of exactly that information. Vaporo is looking for a job for a friend. Veep has a job and is not Vaporo's friend. Convince Veep to cease their employment and Vaporo will be very grateful. That sounds confusing. Convince Jake to complete his transaction with Bina. That sounds a lot simpler overall. This one seems straightforward. Middleman, I can do that. I can be the middleman, the middlewoman. Did I run into something along the way? Oh, that's incredible. That's the sort of thing I wanted to exist in this game, but didn't think it would. Oh my god. I feel like I love it in any game, but ever since it was so well done in like West of Loathing that I love seeing it come back. You come across a lone merchant, a rare sight in Haverian roads. Usually they're smart enough to travel with armed security. Hello, stranger. Nice day, isn't it? This guy seems nice enough. I really like his, like, big, bulky shoulder pads. I hope that isn't actually his shoulders, because if so, I'm a little scared of this guy. 
Benawem's claw clothing is rich, and rich clothing has deep pockets. He's a feud citizenry wealth merchant. That was really hard to say. I'm not even going to try again. And the roads are deserted except for you and your new friend. You're the new friend, I'm guessing. Demand their money? Or be on our way? I'm just going to try and bully this guy out of money? Ah, fuck him. I'll try and take his money. Your money or your life. I'll give you one guess which one I'd prefer. You, you think it's that easy, huh? Those better not be muscles under there. Benawem waves to an unseen observer. Within moments, he is flanked by some imposing backup. You were saying? Try to back down or defend yourself. He has a better resolve than me. His strength is only uh, a one star. He is going to be more difficult uh, to fight, probably. This will be like my practice negotiation. This one isn't actually a quest. This is just me getting like my hands dirty. Opponent has plus 20 resolve. Benuem hates you. That's why his is, is marked red like that. He would His base is 20, but I pissed him off so it jumps up. Now, now, I wasn't serious about that. Oh, really? That's the route you're going to take? Is JK just a prank, bro? I don't think that's going to work too well. Typical deck game, you draw cards, you have action points. Oh, resolve carries over. Shit, so I'm going to weaken my resolve before going into this other negotiation. I better try and make this one quick. Arguments can be attacked. Oh, yeah, they have their own little, like, life, lifeline thing. So this inner circle is his intent, occurs in one turn, will cause four resolve damage to one of your arguments. Oh, interesting, and it's like specifically showing me what it's directed at. His personality, proposition, count times one, add a kickback card to your draw pile at the end of Benoim's term. These get upgraded, possibly just simply by using them. Basic hostility, basic diplomacy, basic manipulation. Or the deflecting is, is reducing a resolve loss. Well, I, I guess I'm going to start with the basic manipulation because I'm just trying things out a little bit. And I get to add one of these to my hand. I'm going to add attitude. Get some stank on my next argument that I throw out there. I know he's kind of coming at me. So I'm going to throw uh, a deflection there to try and defend myself a little bit. Yeah, I have four damage incoming. I'm, I'm defending three of it. I'm going to add some dominance. I'm going to spit on his face or something like that and really assert myself. And it raises the max damage that these things can do. So now I'm also going to throw out a threaten. I can specifically target like... Oh, it's turning red. So not those. I can only, for now, attack his resolve directly. You want some of this? <laughs> Try and get in his face about it. Oh, uh, man. The fact that the, the resolve carries over between things. Oh, I hope I don't have to pay him. Oh, is he willing to weaken his own resolve by getting paid? No, he put that in my hand. I think I would be able to attack him, but I also have to pay him. That's interesting. Oh, he's working to get rid of my, uh, my dominance. He's targeting that instead of my main resolve. Oh, crap, I don't have any dominance cards in my hand right now, because I was thinking, like, shit, I'll just lay out all the dominance before he totally removes that from the battle. Quick thinking, improvise a card from a pool of special cards. Well, I'll see what that's all about. Gain one bonus action next turn. Expend. Oh, okay, it costs nothing, but it, it still does damage. It, it, you don't, it's removed from the... the rest of the negotiation and options draw two cards I want the extra actions later so I'm gonna immediately play that and I'll have an extra action next turn and I can I might as well spend this mmm let me think about that actually yeah if he's planning to try to take that out specifically I'm gonna work to defend it a little bit while I just kinda talk his ear off oh, let me tell you something as quickly as I possibly can Next turn, hopefully I'll have more dominance cards while I still have that in play, and I'll have that extra action to go off of. Oh, he's he's gonna keep putting these damn kickbacks into my into my hand. I can't tell what else he did there. Tribute, when dismissed, gain, draw one extra card at the start of your turn. When dismissed, I don't know how that works. Oh, see, he's got two things coming at me in one at, at once here now. 
Oh, he still managed to defeat my argument? Oh, it might have expired anyways, actually. So my instincts have been upgraded. I'm gonna go ahead and replay that. Oh man, I only have one uh, hostile card and one diplomacy card, so it doesn't even matter which one I boost, really. I guess I'll take attitude again. Oh, but now this is at a times two. I stacked it in some way. I don't want to give this guy money at all, so I'm just going to keep trying to deflect and hopefully take him out with just regular old attacks and everything. It's kind of a, a drawn-out process, though. I, like, he still has a lot, a lot, a lot of health left to go. I didn't think an individual negotiation would be this, oh, would be this rough. Shit, and he just keeps adding those to my hand. I'm, I'm starting to level up the negotiations. That was kind of uncertain at first because I had used one and it didn't level up, but I'm leveling up the individual cards. It's not that I'm leveling up like all negotiation skills, individual cards are being improved. Or that by using deflection, both of them don't level up. It is it is separate in that way. I'm on your side here. Uh, we haven't really shown that to be true, have we? I can attack the bounty. I don't understand if he gets a card or if I do, though. So I'm going to save that for the time being. Shit, I don't want to pay him, so I guess I'm just going to keep deflecting. I could have ended the turn early. You're not half as convincing as you think you are. Uh, you don't say the same thing twice like that, man. Just going to repeat yourself like that? Don't have anything new or original to say, do ya? I'm gonna do some quick thinking again. Ooh, that guy looks wily. Yeah, I'll take observation. Zero to four. Ah, uh, it only did the one. That wasn't great. Shit, I don't have any means of defense this particular time, so I guess I just gotta try and talk his ear off. He's holding out for a better argument. Bad deal. Pay 15 shills. If you end your turn with this card, lose eight resolve. Wait. If I end with that in my hand, not ending it with using it. If you end your turn with this card, I have to use this card this turn? God damn it. At least it expends. It's removed from the deck. Impatient. Benwim's intense and arguments deal plus two damage. And his arguments deploy with plus two resolve. That seems pretty damn useful. I want to have cool personality bonuses. Oh, I wonder if those are some of those things I hadn't unlocked that I could have chose at the beginning of the game. Maybe. Ah, uh, you piece of shit. I don't even- I don't even do damage the way I do with kickback. This one sucks. I basically have to though, because I don't want to lose 8 resolve. God damn it, that sucks to lose money through a negotiation like this, but it like, makes sense within the context of everything, so I, I dig that. I think that's a really cool, interesting thing. I'll try to keep leveling up this one, I guess. I... I'm gonna wait. I'm The next time I draw, like, a fast talk, I'm gonna use it against his bounty and keep my fingers crossed that it benefits me. Holding up for a better argument. Oh, get out of here with that bullshit. I'm sick of my hand being just loaded up with that. I'll, I'm gonna keep using... Instincts. Instincts is super useful. I, again, I don't have hostile or or diplomacy, so I guess that's not going to matter. I will... Oh, this one actually... The uh, inspiration actually still does resolve damage, so I guess that one's still pretty good to have. I'm going to deflect, because he's chucking all kinds of shit at me at this point. I don't... I can't, like, dispel his intents. Those seem... Those seem to, to stick around. I can't, like, target them or anything like that. I'm gonna save this. I might as well hang on to it, right? And hope that I draw some diplomacy cards next turn? Oh, you discard your hand every time. Shit. Well, I guess I should have used it for sure then. He just times to this? He just keeps ramping up, man. I can't deal with how, like, strong his combination of, of shit is getting. It's really starting to wreck me, and I'm just filled with these goddamn kickbacks that I can't deal with. Alright, I'm fast-talking to try and get rid of the bounty. Do I draw a card? Shit, I think he might have just drawn a card or something. I... Wait! Oh, personality! Card draw! 
draw one card at the start of your turn. So I did get that. Killing the bounty was beneficial to me. That was largely how I, like, understood it. Oh, I... Uh, I need to I need to do one kickback. It's, it's doing some damage, at least. That sucks. I don't want to have to lose money like that. But, like, he is hammering me right now. And he's about to do 12 damage completely un unnegated. Oh, fuck. And he just keeps handing me more of these kickback cards. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have gotten a pick to fight with the first guy we saw, you know? Might have been a wee bit of a mistake. Gossip. Deploy an argument with two resolve and bait. They must be targeted before anything else. Consideration. Apply two composure and two randomly, random friendly arguments. Um, I'm gonna attempt gossip. I'm gonna try and make this guy feel like a jerk, I guess. Oh, so that even takes precedent over my my core argument, my core resolve there. Ooh, damn it. I really wish I had better cards right now. I have to try and I have to try and whittle away at him here. I hate paying this piece of shit, but I refuse to lose on like my first encounter here. Ah, uh, I didn't realize the damage would carry over like that. I thought that he would spend all eight damage breaking that argument, even though it only had two of its own resolve, and then the other six would be wasted. No, the other six bounced to my core argument there. You piece of shit. Gain to influence. Yeah, 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 this one. I want, I want inspiration very badly, because now that means these fast talks can do max damage. I can actually win this, but I have, like, no resolve left when I go into my next negotiation. I'm boned. Oh, pick a negotiation card, one of three. Calling in all favors, double your influence at the end of your turn, set influence to one. Swift rebuttal, improvise a zero cost card from the discard pile. Or you can skip and take money. Oppress if this card dismisses an argument to gain one dominance. Oh, so this costs one, but the card I improvise will cost zero. It does damage as well. I think Swift Rebuttal's pretty dope. Let's discuss, shall we? You're not worth the effort. He just left? After all that, I guess, I guess the argument I was making was that, no, I'm just kidding. I wasn't arguing. No, give me money. I still want money. So shit, I got like nothing out of that except for practice, I guess. You exhale. Your dignity in tatters, but your hide intact. That went poorly. Oh, and I pause here. That's good. That's good for me because now I can uh, really think about maybe wanting to go back. Ooh, my relationships. Fish really likes me. Benawem hates me. <laughs> And, uh, Cass Cassio, Cassio hates me. Bane is currently active, minus two max resolve, but if they love you, there's a boon. The reason he hates me is I've robbed them. The reason she likes me is we go way back. That's really cool to get, like, specifics on the relationships like that. No grafts. I don't have any grafts to grift in these lands currently. Play five more times and it'll be ready to upgrade. Preview. Show show me what the preview of the upgrade would be. Do I get to choose? Oh, this one upgrades randomly. Okay, what's one that doesn't upgrade in that particular way? I can either choose diplomatic instincts or hostile instincts. Quick thinking becomes either boosted or promoted. This is really awesome that it branches. That it's not even necessarily... Uh, one set thing every time you upgrade a card. That's awesome. Yeah, I basically have to go back and get drunk to boost my resolve because I'm feeling real out of sorts right now. Oh, I even get the quick relationship status like right there. Patron here guards this location is also a patron here. I need a drink. Please tell me it's not expensive. <laughs> Insert tipsy and slurred speech into your battle and negotiation deck. Damn it. 22 shells to restore 10 resolve. That's not that great, man. I am not doing that, and instead I'm going to choose to do the combat. 
because I don't have the resolve to do more negotiating and I don't really have I don't really have the money to restore otherwise Jesus this is going poorly attack rival Ash is offering you money to lay a beat down upon Torin just be careful not to take it too far Torin has to survive the process Ooh. reward pick a card to help on the quest and upgrade a card Interesting. Okay, please don't run into anything. Ah, ha, ha, that went well. This is good for me. Ooh, look at this shady establishment. Honestly, doesn't seem that uh, <laughs> that different from the grog and dog. These people know what they like. Uh, so I, I can just hit you up on this. Hard work being a bandit. Even harder when you're hooked on the slurry. But Ash gets the job done. An addictive and illegal substance. Ooh, Slurry's a cool name for it. Look at the way his all of our stuff is billowing in this in this building. It's a very drafty bar. The human looks you up and down in suspicion. Opportunity or convince him to eject a patron. <laughs> we'll only do that for his friends. I love the dynamics of of the relationships in this game and the lore building. I'm like 30 some minutes into this and I am like so fully on board to this. Uh, attack rival, I, let's discuss this. Torn has gotten on my nerves for too long. Walking around like they're better than me. Oh, they're like a weird dog person. <laughs> I'll give good money to see her taken down a peg or two. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I kind of have to. So yes, I'm all about that. They offered that up really quickly. Oh, I immediately get this for taking it on. And then those other things were additional benefits. Ooh, shit. I could just gain three defense or discard it to gain a little bit extra. Combo points are accumulated until they are spent by a finisher. Remove all combo at the end of your turn. Ooh, how do I know if something is a finisher? Backstab. If this card was improvised, it costs zero until the end of your turn. And it ignores defense. That one's pretty cool. Just be careful not to actually kill her, though. I don't want that kind of trouble. I will attempt to do that as carefully as possible. You could negotiate for a better deal? That's awesome. That's really cool. Obviously, I'm in no shape to do anything like that, so I'm not taking that on immediately. Uh, should I try to talk to the proprietor? Cock... Kakwi? What's up? The Hessians say good food brings you closer to the divine. Kakwi could be a priest. Day to you. Uh, buy cards, buy a drink. Mm, this one costs more. It was 22 shells. Probably like a friend price there. These are way too expensive. I can't really do it. Flasks, tinctures, and vial of slurry. It makes sense that it's a bunch of like drinks and concoctions and things like that. All right, man. I guess I'm gonna go track down Torin. Oh, so far away. Remember, no killing. That's funny that you actually follow the roads along the way. I like that little little detail there. Oh, I hope none of you guys are here to like defend this that you don't step in or anything. Sandrano, what can you tell me about this? Chose his career based off the assumption that desk jockeys get the best desk chocks ch 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 keys. <laughs> The Admiralty has eyes on all. Pay him to help you. Uh, I probably don't have the money for it. Do I? Might be a bit of trouble coming. You looking to make some cash? Pay to help with a negotiation costs 45. Pay to help with a fight, 67. So you can recruit people on the fly. I think you can become good enough friends that they come help you. Or you can recruit them that way. Torrin has the face of someone hard done by and almost done. Oh, it looks like he has the face of a good little boy. Don't think my day would involve a grifter dealing. A name for any factionless settler, explorer, or opportunist who hails from a Haverian grift lands. Beat up Torrin to make them back off. I don't know how far to take this. I don't know when I can say that it's well enough beat, you know? I have a message from Ash. Oh, really? What does that snail's arse want? This! A couple of messages from 
Mary and Jane. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have names for my fists. Draw five cards, just like before. Oh, there's a breaking point where health isn't the only way to end it. So that's what I'm looking for. Diplomatic consequences. Okay, so I only ever control myself. The allies are kind of autonomous, which is good. That'd be a lot to like individually choose all the action points of every character you control. So I, I do like that. You can see the breaking point right there. So it's about one quarter of this guy's health, somewhere probably around eight or nine. Oh yeah, the healing vapors that I picked up. I already, I already got those. Regular ass stab, uh, faint defense. Oh, he's he's going for eight damage. This guy's really going for it. Or an elbow strike is a guaranteed three. Um, well, I'm gonna defend. Hmm. I guess I'm not gonna defend that much right away because the quicker I can put an end to this, probably the better. So one, one defense is good, just to not take that full amount of damage or anything like that. A status effect will be applied to him. When? How? Is that something I'm going to do? Improvise a card from a pool of special cards, fighting dirty. I ooh, apply bleed, draw two cards, and one power. Whenever you deal damage, deal an additional one damage. I was going to try to improvise that card that it made it cost zero if you improvise it. I will then uh yeah, I'll try I'll try the bleed. Let's let's try and get a little bit of bleed going on this guy. So on the next turn he should take two damage. The turn after that he takes one. I assume it kind of dips off in that in that manner. Backstab. Oh, this is the card I was trying to improvise, so obviously that wasn't gonna work. He's not defending, so I don't really need that right now. He's, oh, will be applied by him. It's not that he's uh, going to have one applied to him. Yeah, so he's not attacking. I don't have to defend. He's getting ready to use something uh, specifically against me for, with a status effect. Gather, we will suffer no more. What did you do? What did you, oh, he applied it to himself. He added power. Whenever he deals damage, deal an additional one damage. Oh, and he's defending a little bit this time. Now I wish I had the backstab because it ignores defenses. Insert hammer grip or saber grip into your hand. I think it also adds a combo point. I won't use the healing vapors just yet because I would be one shy. I, I would rather save it for when I have more than six health lost. All right, I'll defend someone this turn and then I'll try, I'll try out this guy. Hammer grip, gain two combo. And, or this one, adding more bleed. I still don't even know what my, like, finisher card is or anything like that. Let me look and see. Is one of these labeled a finisher in some obvious, meaningful way? Attack, maneuver, item. I don't see anything directly explaining that to me, so I don't know. But I'm going to use this guy because it does damage and adds bleed. So I'm, I'm going to try and, like, really lay on the bleed. Do you know what? He's he's uh, defending this turn, so I'm going to as well. That cool little feint with your knife there. Real distracting, eh? I just figured if he's going to layer on the defense, he doesn't defend too often. So I might as well defend while he's defending. Um, now it might, might make sense to use the healing vapors. Or I could possibly... Ooh, if I got real lucky... If I got lucky, I could maybe get him down low enough. Oh, it actually actually did run behind him. It actually played out that animation. I'm going to use the stab because it has a high potential. It only did three. Ooh. Now I'm going to lay down the elbow strike. That is for sure the breaking point. And so he, he gives up. He gives up. Execute. I could... Oh my god. If you get someone to the breaking point and they throw in a surrender, you can for zero cost on the spot just kill them. I accept the surrender. That's the what I was trying to go for. That was awesome. Winning a battle has restored 10 resolve. Perfect. That's a nice way to, to stock that up a little bit. I don't know what that is. That's what you get when you stock. And then I get to choose a new battle card. Thieves Instincts. Improvise a random common or uncommon maneuver card. Costs zero until played. Draw three cards. Gain two counter. Deals one damage to the enemy when hit. Or the backstab, which I already have. It costs zero until played, so I think it could be added to my hand. I could choose to not use it that turn. It could get discarded, come back around, and still be zero. I don't know if a discard counts necessarily. 
Let's do readiness. Just sure ourselves up. Enough, enough! Please, let me live! You need to be more careful of the enemies that you make. That, that was... Oh, he dislikes me because I attacked him. But he's also intimidated. They will not join combat against you. Just get it over with. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to him to see what he had to say. You dispensed with violence. It's time for Ash to dispense with cash. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to claim myself a, a reward here. Please don't run into anything. I just want to get by. No scrapes or cuts along the way. Easy does it. Greetings once again. Negotiate a better deal. You can negotiate after the fact. Uh, it doesn't say, but I almost wonder if your odds of getting a good deal would be better after it's been completed. You've, you've already proven that you've done it. Ah... Uh, but I don't know. I, it seems like it doesn't actually change. I'm trying to think like like the real world negotiation tactics. There's reasons it could go either way. It doesn't seem like it matters. It would be funny to try and negotiate a deal out of him right now. I've gained that extra resolve. I don't think I'm going to risk it. I'm just going to take my damn money and be safe about it. I wish I could have seen the look on her face. Ash likes you. See, that's the thing. I got the money. I got a card upgrade. He likes me. Upgrade a negotiation card or a battle card. I'll upgrade a negotiation. The negotiations seem like they have fun potential. This Threaten is barely upgraded. Like, this one's on its way to being upgraded, and so I'm gonna- I'll choose to upgrade this one. Ooh, here it's selecting the two random cards that it could be. So, a three to four damage, so it's just like it does a lot more on the lower end there, or this one that you only get one chance to use. I'm gonna go for the big heavy hitting one use thing, I think. And possibly, I could I could request an ejection at this point. We're good enough pals. Uh, but probably uh, I'm gonna need to add more hostile cards to my deck because I only have the two. One's gonna get expended or I commit a lot harder to like a diplomacy path overall. And then when I do this one where it's like you can add the inspiration or attitude, I would just always pick inspiration. Or when I upgraded it, thinking way further ahead, I could very specifically commit to the the diplomatic one and, and things like that. Because then, you know, I'm just promoting that part of my deck as much as possible. Okay, do I report back to fsh at this point? Oh, it, it just added more like more non-quest things now too. A meditation spot, there's something special about this place. You could go here to gather your thoughts and strengthen your resolve. Or a healing spring, a rare lumen fissure has opened in the bedrock here. Funny things happen when raw lumen vapors get to dry land. I'm gonna go to the meditation spot because my resolve sucks right now. Damn it! Alright, well I'm not gonna get in a fight or anything if I can avoid it. Fight? Maybe. Negotiation? No. Trapezing through the roadside bush, you find two dead bodies slumped against a partially dug grave. Shit. Okay, so not even... Maybe someone will spring an ambush on me, but... Whoa. One of them still clutches what looks to be a valuable coil gun. Pry the aerostat coil gan gun from the corpse. Gain two bonus damage for every card played this turn. And replenish? When this is drawn, draw another card. Ooh, it's a unique item. Finish the burial and depart with a clear conscience. Upgrade your max resolve by four? That's kind of huge. Both of these are awesome. A unique item or a permanent upgrade? I want the item. You're forced to break some of the corpse's fingers to pry the weapon from its grasp for horrible people. You finish the botched burial afterwards, but can't help but feel a little rueful. <laughs> like we just lazily were like, I don't know, just chuck them in the dirt. I don't give a shit. Uh, good for us. That's fucking cool. I love those kinds of random encounters and stuff. Oh, I'm absolutely in love. Notifications, I can just kind of scan through the last few significant occurrences. That's right on. Meditation spot. Hopefully no one picks a fight with us here. The wood falls silent. There's nobody around. You can take a moment to gather your thoughts. Meditate for a short while or a long while. Ooh. I lose HP if I do that? It's only 5 HP versus still only having two-thirds of my resolve. I am going to choose to do a long meditation. You slow your breathing and fall into a deep trance. I guess you get hurt because you're like not eating 
or something like that. I'm trying to think of like what the the game implications are uh, of that. When you're done, your back aches, but you have achieved a clarity you haven't felt in weeks. That, that achy back really bringing us down did as much damage as a knife to the ribs did. I, hmm, I guess before I round out this episode, I am going to go back and take on the, yes, yeah, starting bonus. It's specifically listed as starting. I'm going to go back and do the negotiation that I originally set out to do. Bedouin's just chilling out here. Uh, I'm, I hope he doesn't jump in on the negotiation or anything like that. Bina comes from a long line of warriors, known for getting the job done. Eh? Uh, let's let's negotiate. Convince Chaik to complete his transaction with Bina. I hear you're looking for help. You heard right. I run a little import-export business. I find things people want and they pay me accordingly. What kind of things? Imports from the mainland, mostly. Unmentionables occasionally. Does the hunter have scruples? Or will you be taking the job? I assume you'll be paying me... F you'll be paying well for the ask me no questions vibe. A client ordered some very expensive items, then backed out at the last minute, leaving me with the bag. Now I'm sitting on a shipment with no buyer. I don't want the goods. It takes time and money to find a new buyer. I need you to go remind him the meaning of all sales are final. Okay. Now I, I better understand what, what the situation is here. I felt like I didn't truly know what was going on. So I get to choose a negotiation card to go in. Veiled Anger... It just does damage, but it has like no other effect, which is interesting. It's like one, it's the only blank card I've seen. Free damage, but you lose influence and intrigue. Spend to influence to deal for bonus damage. I like the idea of having a freebie to go off of. Consider it taken care of. Don't come back to me without a buyer, you hear? Hmm. Ah, uh, <laughs> would jump in. Probably strictly entirely just because they don't like me. Otherwise, they'd probably keep their nose out of it, you know? I like how it, it removes the other quests. You can't pick anything else up. You're, like, singularly going to deal with this. Shake looks like man-at-arms from He-Man. Oh, I guess all these guards kind of do. Arug and Del. What do you got to say, Del? Word is, Del fights for his workers. But nobody's ever uh, really selfless in the Grifflands, right? This is a place of work, not a place to talk. Be quick about it. I could pay him 45 to negotiate with me. Do you know what? Let's give it a try. Let's just see what hiring someone looks like. Here, you know what to say? I'll say whatever you need me to, friend. I wonder if we're going to establish a relationship, like we'll become friends through this, or if like this is a one-time thing, he's just going to come chill out with me for this one negotiation. I just, I, it was expensive, that was half my money, but I wanted to see what it looks like to have someone backing you up. And then that's a good thing to include for people who want to see, like, a nice big full range of what the game can do in one episode. You haven't been talking to Bina, have you? Actually, yes, absolutely. Tells me you two had a deal, and you lost your nerve. Yeah, like I told her already, I don't want second-rate goods. Second-rate? The last batch I got from her was a total bust. Unusable trash. Last batch of what, exactly? I'd uh, rather not say. Probably slurry, is my guess. Offer to convince Bina to back off. You can... Oh my god, this is blowing my mind. You can, like, two-time people and, like, play both sides or whatever? Like, I already got the bonus card for starting this, and I can flip it back around. Oh my god, I could choose to just fight instead. I could convince... Or rough up. He's a heavy laborer, so he's a bit of a bulky dude. It's a two-star difficulty. I got I got the foreman here though. He's the Bosch. Bosch. He should be able to just tell you to lay off, right? I don't care about the details. Bina wants her money. I won't pay. Well, get ready to be yelled at. You can trust Sal. <laughs> Thanks for that, Dell. Not really a matter of trust. Oh, you can give up and lose. Once you play a card, you cannot concede until the following turn. So if things are going real rough, you can just be like, you know what, I didn't mean it. I don't want no part in this. This is a much easier overall argument than the one against Frog Boy, Rich Frog Boy, which makes sense. I pissed him off, so he doubled. He had that plus 20, actually. 
defensive gains two composure whenever a new argument is created. Whenever I create one, probably? Interesting. Oh, improvise from the discard, so I don't have... Okay, well I'm gonna try something out here then. This effect is added to your opponent's arguments. It reduces their resolve damage by 33. Interesting. Reduce resolve loss for one turn, or just draw a bunch of cards. I want to try out Gruff. I want to try and use that against him. And also, I want to try and use this, because I should... There's only one card in the discard, right? So I should just get it back. Oh, that didn't work at all how I thought it would. I thought I was automatically... Improvise a zero cost card. Oh, you don't pick up a card and change it to zero cost. If I had a zero cost card in the discard, I would pluck it up. So, yeah, didn't quite work how I thought it would. I'm gonna chuck Gruff at this guy. Now his, his, uh... He does less damage, <laughs> is basically what's happening there. Veiled Anger, I don't want to veil it, I want it to be out in the open. I want him to know that I'm pissed off, that I'm a big, I'm angry as hell. I'm gonna whip out some fast talking, oh that was, that was it, that was enough. I was getting on a big roll, getting all excited about playing things. He can't attack Dell. Dell is just there to like back me up, so probably he'll duck in here. There's no way that was the end of his contributions to this, right? <laughs> I paid him a lot. I paid him half my money. Uh, but he doesn't have his own arguments that Shake can, like, uh, attack or anything like that. Irritable, gain one count whenever a card is played. When this card reaches ten, the opponent loses five resolve and this argument is dismissed. Okay, it just, it just slowly builds over time. That's... I'm hoping I can defeat him more quickly than that. Ooh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add, uh, attitude, because I should be able to boost these guys, and pff, I could potentially win here if this does a healthy amount. Ah, oh, it all got deflected, it all got deflected. Well, I'm gonna use that because I don't want to discard it. I'll, I'll take, I'll take four damage on the chin, that's fine. This is going way more smoothly. This is how I wanted that last one to go. Oh, he's healing himself up a little bit. You SOB. Uh, I don't have anything in my discard, so that wouldn't do anything for me. Inspiration, though. I I could do. I could play this again and gain gain some influence here, to um, improve improve some of my diplomacy cards. He's not attacking me, so I don't have to worry about defending. And I can just kind of hammer on him with some of these. I still didn't have a zero. <laughs> A zero cost card to, to gain back from that one. Oh, let me tell you something that you're a punk and I'm gonna put an end to this. Uh, veiled anger costs nothing. Might as well throw it out there and like help it get upgraded a wee little bit. Oh, he countered me, didn't he? You sneak. You damn sneak. Well, I should be able to breeze through some of these and and I should be able to actually let n level up this threaten for an upgrade. Ooh, I could upgrade or I want a new negotiation card. That's what I that's what I'm going for. Keep cool, double composure on all arguments. Reduce is that just for like one turn, I guess, maybe? No, that on all arguments, so probably not my core one. Not like my main resolve. That's pretty powerful. Spend two influence, deal four bonus damage. I've seen that one. Or browbeat. It costs oh, all I've seen this in Slay the Spire. It costs all the available action points you have remaining. Play once for each action available. Oh yeah, so Browbeat. You just bam, bam, bam. You can do one to two damage up to three times potentially. Or more, because I, I have played cards before that let me expand that. I'll try Intrigue, I guess. I was debating maybe even taking money. Oh, I also get upgraded. No, no, no. Yeah, that's it's just letting me know that I have this to be upgraded. Uh, that wasn't anything I earned, that just came about through that. Ah, so it raised... No, nope, that's still the same max damage, actually. Uh, but I get to draw a card. Do I want another just hammer the hell out of people card? That 8 damage was pretty awesome to have. Visionary threaten. Um, sure, why not? Let's, let's get some v variety in the deck. 
Oh. Destroy is different from uh, whatever it was. There's like the name for certain cards that are like removed that you don't get to use for the rest of the negotiation. That card might be gone. That powerful threatened card might have been a one-time use thing. I'll have to investigate more on that because that kind of sucks. Fine, I'll do it. Go tell Bina I'll take the bloody shipment. But this is the last time. That seems agreeable to me. I can't believe how little you did. Oh, but if I have to, ever have to negotiate here again, he'll still stick around? He'll still help? That's unexpected. I did not picture that to be like a long-term partnership or anything. So that's kind of great. That's pretty cool for me. I, I report back, claim my rewards and everything, put an end to that. Fuck you, Benoem. Did you knock some sense into her? Oh, I sure did. The deal is back on. I should use you for all my negotiations. Yeah, do that. I wouldn't mind having some consistent work. Did it just switch to, to nighttime? 60 shells. Ooh, sweet, sweet money. Oh, and, I, and I get to heal up a little bit. Uh, restore my resolve, I think, is the better one that I want right now. Gift 150 to your friend grants bargaining. This will cause Bina to love you, and you will get their relationship bonus of bargaining. 10 shill discount from shopkeepers. Oh, I get that everywhere? So, that, like, you, you're literally buying her love for 150 but a 10 shill discount everywhere. You have to make 15 purchase purchases to pay that back off again. But eventually, maybe I'll have enough money, like I'll be rolling in dough, that that makes sense. Spar with Ash to upgrade one of your battle cards. It will can cost some health. Uh, so it's not a real battle. It's just like a, a quick event. Desolate Battlefield. A recent fight took place here. Perhaps there's still some treasure to find lying about. Ooh, fish has a special job for you. All right, that seems that seems very important for the story. So we got to do one of these. Uh, I'm gonna do the desolate battlefield first and see if I can just get my grubby fingers on anything. You come across the signs of a recent battle. If there were any winners, they weren't the type to loot the battlefield. The bodies are still fresh. Best to grab something and run before any beasts are drawn to the bloodshed. A salve for healing. Destroy removes the card permanently. Yeah, so destroy is kind of rough. <laughs> I don't know if I want to establish too many destroy cards one or two at a time because you're going to keep drawing them over and over again. And you're just saving them for like one big use. A combat drone, uh, it fights for you. It also gets permanently destroyed. And Shrieker, out of the mud, deal one resolve damage to all enemy targets at the beginning of your turn. Uh, sure, I'll try the Shrieker. Oh, that was a graft. That one was not a card. I was more, it, it, it looked like a little bit different. It didn't look entirely like a card. So I, I have my first graft, which is cool. Ah, you wrestle with the loot lodged in the mud, even as a mournful howl cuts through the air. It, it isn't long before you're joined by the pack. I, I want to look at my grafts. So deal one resolve damage to all enemy targets at the beginning of your turn. So that must be at the start of the battle, right? Not permanently. Ah, uh, and this is a battle battle. It's a fleed! So because this is a regular battle, it's not going to do anything. Two damage and a status effect, and that's just regular two damage. Their chitinous, they gain four defense at the end of their turn. Ah, oh, they're just going to keep defending themselves over and over and over again. God damn it. That's going to be annoying to deal with. All right, well, I want some readiness, draw some extra cards, gain some counter which will be handy. Whenever I attack, I need to like commit hard to attacking because every single time I'm gonna have to blast my way through the armor that they're like repeatedly rebuilding. Fuck, I didn't, I didn't get very good rolls there, so I still only did one damage to this thing. These things might like mess me up because they're gonna be able to defend themselves so, so heavily. Oh, yes. Please, piercing. Piercing is precisely what I needed here. That's so useful. Uh, gains plus two bonus damage for every card played this turn. Okay, okay. Uh, I can do the backstab to go straight through his defenses there. Oh, so, so useful. I'm going to risk trying. Uh, I only did one. I should have maybe went for the elbow strike, but I was kind of risking it. 
and the railgun. Oh, oh, I did break through the defenses though. Um, great. <laughs> In that case, railgun chase that guy off. Ooh, this one versus one is way, 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 way more manageable. Uh, oh, it's destroyed permanently. It is destroyed permanently. Shit. I didn't want that. All right, well, this guy can't do much damage. So if I just keep fainting, doing like the one, one at a time here is uh, one versus one in this fleet. I should be fine. Draw two cards. You would draw one and discard one. Uh, so you're kind of just swapping if you think something you have is useless. And Mud Tosser gains some extra combo. Ah, whatever, I'll take Scrounge, I guess. Give me, give me some extra cards to look at. Oh, I accidentally applied a defense a second time. That was stupid. Cripple, attack damage by this target is reduced by 33. Oh, that's very annoying. Because I very, very much am trying to do, like, as much damage as possible to this stupid thing. That's a, that's a lot more difficult to pull off if he's going to be lowering my attack like that. At the very least, I can try and level up some of those cards. I think I just leveled up one of them. Wound attacks inflict one bonus damage on this target, so he can really start hammering away on me. Yeah, I definitely want to faint then and try and keep myself uh, well protected. The elbow strike is ready to be leveled up. I'll try and use some like regular stabs and everything like that. The stab is nearing being able to be leveled up. It won't won't quite be ready. Might not be able to have it ready by the end of this turn. I like I like getting the level ups on things. The backstab, very useful. Gonna keep using that. Gonna defend myself a little bit so I don't let this get kind of uh, away from me here. And to hell with it. Throw throw another stab at him. I, I, I realize that's the improvising a card probably wasn't gonna do me much good. Might as well work on leveling something up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I do I do want to apply bleed to this thing, because that will probably hurt it. Uh, it might it might still apply to the defense. I'm not entirely sure about that. But even if it does, that that it would have helped me either way. Okay, managed to finish it off though. Pick a battle card, upgrade, and restored one resolve. <laughs> Elbow strike will be upgraded to... Oh, it destroys it. It's a permanent thing, which, god damn it. I don't want all my cards being destroyed all the time. It's cool to have such a heavy hitting thing, but I'd rather it get upgraded to four or five and it get, like sticks around, you know? I guess I'll add the combo potential. And random battle card. Combination deal one bonus damage per combo. So this is a finisher? Shit, it might not even be. Ambush automatically placed in your hand at the start of battle. And it costs nothing. So that's pretty dope. And exertion gain two actions. Lose one action next turn. I really like that as well. Both of those are cool. I like, I like having the instant go ahead there. The bodies are growing ripe, and more scavengers are sure to be on their way. Best to cut while you're ahead. We'll go talk to Fish, and kind of put a bow on this, do an extra long episode. I would be more, more than happy to play more of this game. It's like Slay the Spire with story. The, like, characters and lore building and, oh my god, there's, I pretty much love everything about this game currently. Fish greets you enthusiastically. Sal, I've lined up a great opportunity for you. Those two over there are night merchants. They sell rare goods you can't get nowhere else. And it just so happens they need your help. You can only be in one place at a time, but either will get you a leg up you sorely need, kid. kid. Go tell them I sent you and ingratiate yourself. Just be warned that they're both persnickety so-and-sos. You're probably going to cheese off the one you don't pick. Huh, sounds neat. Thanks, fish. Plaka the Swab or Rake? Rake is a neat name. I like that this guy's got a nickname and he's got a cool hat and everything. I'm gonna go with Plaka. Plaka the Swab. A customer's late on their payments to Plaka, time to make them pay up, and Rake needs some help getting a loan extension. I I think I'm gonna choose Plaka, but I... I I kind of want to dick out, duck out to the, uh, dick out to the map for a second, too. Because there, there was this here. Welcome to Haveria, this, like, special job. Uh, establish your, may, oh, okay, that, that might be the, everything that I've been doing. 
is is all a part of that particular quest, I think. Eat one of their famous fish cakes. Inserts bloated into your battle deck. It's really funny that you get these like negative cards for getting drunk or eating too much food and things like that. I want to talk to you about that. It was kind of a mistake actually clicking where I did in the, in the map here. So okay, I'll, I'll I'll accept Plaka's thing and see if it opens up that as an opportunity. Highly skilled, highly paid mercenary working on retainer for the Clust. Oh, I wish I could highlight Clust. What brings you back? Ask about the special job. Fish says you're looking for some hired muscle. Looks you up and down. You feel like an Oshnu on market day. The giant snails. Yes, you'll do. Wait. Do for what? What is the actual job? You just need to stand behind me and look intimidating. You can handle that, right? Depends. What's standing in front of you? Don't worry about that part. You do this job, and I'll let you into the night market. Ask about... Details? No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have followed up. I wanted to know what the night market was. Hiring you to do work, not to ask annoying questions. You can handle it, or I won't hire you. It gets you closer to your goal, and you'll earn my gratitude. Take it or leave it, Grifter. I accept. The details are fuzzy, but I'm in. New party member. Oh, you straight up joined the party, and now Rake dislikes us. You persnickety so-and-so. Excellent. Let's go. I'll lead the way. Plaka joins you. You're going to help Plaka instead of me? Don't expect me to help you in the future, Grifter. Mm, sorry. Open map. Ah, I, I'm trying... Okay, so maybe maybe this is still all part of this quest or whatever. I might have initiated the quest that I, I intended to. Yeah, help one of the merchants, and I chose to help Plaka. Okay, I thought that was something I was missing. That was totally my confusion. Didn't mean to make it so damn complicated or anything. Spark Baron's Professional. Dude's got a, a lot of health, actually. And yeah, that, to that little symbol is totally his affiliation. Okay, I was thinking I would go for, like, push in an hour, 40, 60 minutes or whatever. It was too good, though. It was too damn good. I love it. This is, like, exactly, exactly what I wanted this game to be. I've been keeping a close eye. I'm so happy it's finally here. I hope you guys are excited about it, too. Let me know if you want to see more of this. If I did more, they probably are not going to be this long consistently. But I wanted to give everyone a nice, big, thorough introduction to what this game uh, has to offer. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you again soon.